Mini-ITX has always been the pricier side of PC building due to its hyped up costs. So with prices falling, I thought it'd be a good idea to build a $400 Mini-ITX gaming PC. So let's get into the parts I got. So for the CPU, motherboard, RAM combo we have a Xeon E3 1220v3, a 4 core 4 threaded CPU that matches a 4th gen i5, 16GB of machinist DDR3 memory, and a B85 ITX motherboard all copped off AliExpress for 230 Aussie dollars. Now it all looks pretty standard with a single SATA cable and IO shield included for ease of use and it's nice to have something new for once. For the cooler I went with an AR12 RGB which is the cheapest RGB CPU cooler I could find and should be fine for a build like this. For the power supply I went with a 450 watt 80 plus bronze SFX PSU from Silverstone. It's the bare minimum with ketchup and mustard cables but honestly we don't need much for a build like this. Storage, I have the single 480 gig SSD which should provide us with fast boot times and load times. Containing this build is the NR200P, a phenomenal mini ITX case that we managed to grab for 78 Aussie dollars. It came with this two Arctic P12s, but we'll be using the Shunda RGB fans for 50 Aussie dollars instead, which comes with an RGB controller and all the necessary cables. To top the build off, we have the 126 Aussie dollars GTX 1050 Ti, which will put our total at under 640 Aussie dollars, which should provide decent enough performance for the price range. So without further ado, let's get into the build.
All right, with the system done, let's see if it works or not. Okay, fans are on. Five minutes later. Okay. Oh, oh. Give me a display, please. Anything. BIOS. Oh, no. So, yeah. That's why our PC has different parts compared to what was shown. But I redid the cable management. Got a 960 for 120 Aussie dollars at CEX as a replacement. Got these RGB LED strips for 17 Aussie dollars. And finally, the Arctic P12s that came with the case. So that puts our total back down to under 600 Aussie dollars. And yeah, let's see what this thing can do now. The most demanding game today, Jedi Fallen Order ran at 1080p medium with an average of 60 FPS, but I had to turn on V-Sync and Dynamic Res due to micro freezes. Still very enjoyable though. Up next is Forza Horizon 4, and at 1080p medium settings, we get an average of 70 FPS, while the game still looks absolutely gorgeous, and yeah, it's an overall really smooth experience with no hiccups whatsoever. Moving on to esports titles, we have Halo Infinite, a very intensive title running at 1080p low settings with dynamic resolution, and we managed to get 60 FPS, which is a really surprising result considering how badly this game runs on most systems. Now, Overwatch is where this system truly shines, with an average of 150 FPS at 1080p low settings with 100% resolution scaling. This is perfect for higher refresh rate monitors and it's just really enjoyable. Overwatch 2, the game next in line, despite several optimization issues and a slight performance hit, the overall feel of the gameplay is still the same and I think that's a good thing because you'll be able to enjoy two games of the same series on the same machine. In Apex Legends, at 1080p low, we managed to get 90 FPS on average, and instead of having V-Sync off like I always do, I turned it on adaptive because I found out it gives out more consistent frame rates and less stutters. As I'm getting destroyed here in Fortnite, at 1080p in performance mode, we get an average of 152 FPS, which is perfect for a title like this as you'll have no disadvantages in competitive play, unless you're me, of course. Finally, Valorant at 1080p low returns a surprisingly high average of 175 FPS, which is perfect if you want to hone your skills and go pro, I guess. I think that's one thing people do with this game. So, final verdict time. What are my thoughts on this PC? So, well, we ran into the problem where the graphics card literally died along with the case fans, but I don't think that hindered us too much in the final product. I managed to get a refund and the system still turned out great. The 960 and the Xeon are a bit underwhelming, but it can still play games and I think that's an amazing thing, especially after using it for a week without problems. So yeah, that's it folks, the $400 mini ITX gaming PC. I hope you've had a lot of fun joining me in this journey and I hope to see you all around. So like the video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if you didn't, subscribe to me if you want to see more future content and I hope you'll have a nice day or night, wherever you are. Just have a great time, all right?